Sorry, sorry, team. That was unfortunate timing. You left as the lion started roaring, roaring, <laughs> roaring, <laughs> and rejoined as they finished. But there's a strong chance they will roar again. Sorry to race you away from Byron, but I was hoping that we would get that beautiful, beautiful sound. What a way to wake up in the morning. Now, I'm guessing the large male, it sounded like the roaring started further away from us, and I'm guessing it's the big male. I can actually just see him now. He's just at about 10 o'clock, uh, Manu. Little bit, no, a little bit to the left. A little bit more. Next big tree. A bit more. And they should pop into frame shortly. What is he hiding? A bit more. Where are you? There you are. So I think he's the individual that started the roaring. And we actually haven't seen him come into contact with these young males yet. So let's see what happens. You can see he's approaching with caution. He hasn't greeted many members of this pride that we've seen. He was certainly on his own. And that's why he's approaching with a bit of caution. Even though he's a big male, he's coming into quite a few lion here. Not the warmest welcome from the lady. But certainly submissive, you can see the way she rolled over there onto her back, just indicating that she doesn't want any trouble with him. Let's see what happens when he gets to the young males, which he's heading towards now. Now, I'm sure they all know one another. They've been roaring. There shouldn't be any major surprises here, but you never know what's going to happen, and I certainly have... Not that I remember spent time with this pride, so don't know much about their history and who this big male is. Hmm. Maybe I should reposition. <laughs> So he's doing a little scent mark there, again furthering or further establishing and displaying that he is the boss. And he's happy to bundle down next to one of what could be his girlfriends. I'm not sure if he's part of a bigger coalition. Like I said, I do not know anything about these individual lines. Oh, oh. I can hear roaring far away and so can they. could be other lions that are part of this pride because I'm certain there was more than four of them when we initially found them so it could be one that's trailing behind who's wanting to catch up with the rest of the pride yeah I can actually see one um yeah well done okay it looks like another two lioness there. So it seems like there's four lioness, two young males, and this big male, which equals seven of them, at least, possibly some more. Hi, John. Thanks for sending your question through. You would like to know if lions can distinguish pride members from random lions merely by sight, or is it purely by scent and hearing? And I think it's a combination of all of those things. Definitely sight. Um, I guess to, to us, to them, we all look the same, and kind of them to us, they all look the same, unless you start really taking a very close look at them. But for them, they're definitely going to be able to work out who's who. 
maybe not very easily after dark or from a distance, but certainly once they get relatively close, I think they will understand and be able to distinguish from their appearance and their features. So it's a combination of scent, smell, and the vocalizations. All three will play a part in them distinguishing who is who. Now, I think what may have happened last night is that these, the four lioness, or at least one of them, may have been successful in making a kill. They may have all had a snack, but I think these two young boys that are part of this pride got the majority of the food that was up for grabs because their bellies look quite full, whereas the lionesses don't seem to be as fortunate. So, strong likelihood that these young boys contributed very little to the hunting, but ate the majority of the food. I could be wrong. They could have been lucky and been the ones to snag onto a wildebeest or a zebra. They can certainly hunt, but young boys tend to be a little bit lazy, as do the older ones. <laughs> Hello, Squeaky Val. You'd like to know if this big male lion that is with the pride would kill cubs that he did not father. And yes, that is the way it works out here. And it's a, a definite yes to that answer. Uh, a lot of predator cubs, be it lion, leopard or cheetah, are killed by rival males. And it's harsh, but it's an important way and a very useful way of Mother Nature ensuring that only the strongest, most, most successful genes get passed down the line. And by killing cubs that they did not father, they free up the lionesses to come into season almost immediately. Within a week or so, they'll come into season. They can then, he can then mate with them, and his cubs will then be born into what in theory should be his kingdom. Where are the other two ladies? They are taking their time, maybe they flop themselves down nearby. Or maybe they're going to pop out behind one of these bushes, still making their way to the rest of the pride. I always find it interesting how, you know, these dynamics and movements, sometimes they all walk side by side, other times there's big gaps between them. Oh, there we go, one's popped out there. Some of the lioness, the, or, I mean, these two lioness that dropped back may have done so strategically in the knowledge that there's quite a lot of zebra and topi here, and some may have been flushed towards them. So these guys maybe got the least food last night and are possibly the most interested in getting another meal. But at the moment, it looks like they're just happy to cuddle one another. <laughs> okay, well, we are going to be sending you back to Juma to view a very majestic antelope, one that you do not get here in the Mara.